Hello and welcome to another Salty Sunday. Today I'm going to talk about the Southern Resident Walkers. I hesitated to cover this particular story because I find it very distressing, but the plight of these incredible orcas must be told again and again if we're to have any hope of saving this endangered population. Recently, tragic images once again made the headlines of a female orca carrying her dead calf through the water. Researchers from the Centre of Whale Research confirmed the newborn calf was less than three days old, still with its umbilical cord attached. It was full term or nearly so, and may have been stillborn or died shortly after birth. The mother, a 26-year-old named Alki, has faced a tragedy before, enduring miscarriages and the death of a calf named Sonic, who died emaciated in 2017 at just two years old. Many will remember another heartbreaking story when in 2018, another orca called Talakwa carried her dead calf for 17 days, traveling over a thousand miles before finally letting it go. More recently, in late 2024, Talakwa gave birth again, but the calf died within a week, and once more, she carried the body. There is no doubt in my mind that this behavior is an expression of grief. Orcas are highly intelligent beings known for their complex social structures and sophisticated communication. They have a highly developed insular cortex, which, like us, is linked to emotion and consciousness, giving them remarkable cognitive abilities, such as problem solving, cultural transmission of knowledge, and even distinct dialects within pods. All of this points to a level of intellect and emotional depth that, in many ways, rivals our own. The loss that the southern resident orcas endure is staggering. Researchers estimate that nearly 70% of detectable pregnancies fail, with one third lost in late stages or shortly after birth, when the emotional and physical toll is greatest. Decades ago, a southern resident orca could be expected to have a calf every three to five years. Today, many never reproduce at all, and successful mothers may only have one calf every 10 years. So what's behind this collapse in reproductive success? Scientists point to two main stresses. The first one is the periodic nutritional stress experienced by the orcas due to the lack of Chinook salmon, which is the orca's preferred food source. Wild Chinook salmon populations are vastly reduced in the Pacific Northwest. All Chinook salmon runs to the rivers of the west coast of North America from California to British Columbia are listed as endangered and more than half of the runs are already extinct. The other stressor is their exposure to persistent organic pollutants which are lipophilic compounds. This means that they dissolve in fats and so bioaccumulate in the orca's blubber. These POPs are known to lead to neurological damage, immune suppression, disruption of reproductive success and reduced calf survival in marine mammals. Unfortunately, female orcas transfer these chemicals into their calves during gestation and while nursing. The highest levels of transfer are in the first five months of a 15 month lactation period, which is of great concern as newborn calves are still developing and this large influx of toxins could lead to neurological and other issues that can persist. The southern resident orca's struggle for survival is made all the more poignant when you look at the history of these particular orcas. At present, there are known to be 73 or 74 members within three pods, that is J, K and L. The population likely numbered around 200 orcas before the 20th century. In the 1960s, southern resident orcas were captured for use in marine mammal parks and by 1974, only 71 animals remained, their numbers severely depleted due to this barbaric practice. There was some growth in the population in the 1970s and 1980s, with a peak of 98 orcas in 1995, but they have never fully recovered. We have treated these and other orcas appallingly. We have stolen their food, poisoned their waters and torn them from their families. Yet even after all of this, they continue to endure. 
they carry their dead, they mourn, and they keep fighting to survive. The very least that we can do is advocate for them, which many amazing people are doing. Without bold action to restore salmon runs, reduce pollution, and protect their habitat, the southern resident orcas will disappear within our lifetime. This is a human-made crisis, and it is down to us to put it right. If you have enjoyed this video, then please like, subscribe, and share with your like-minded friends.